podcast. I'm recording. Okay. Uneducated, unfiltered, unhinged. This is the Mangina Dialogue. We at it again with your host, Nick Scopes. And the Gregolicious. You know how we do, because you know we keeping it gangster and silly. Unplug like a fool swan titty. About get kitty. Cause you know we down to the nitty and the gritty. And we make shit sound so damn pretty. Yeah, cause this unhinged comedy. And right now you're in the mix. So get ready, cause we about to get it poppin'. We ain't stopping. Hello and welcome to the Mangina Dialogues. I am your host, Nick Scopes. I'm the Gregalicious. <laughs> I just realized our guest today is the father of five. <laughs> <laughs> I this am. Poor, poor, exhausted man. <laughs> Seven uh, Day King. We didn't even warn you about the song. I just realized. Yeah, I totally forgot. We just played no, it. And I'm I, like, fuck. <laughs> no, I I like it. I heard it. It's good. You're good. You're good yet. Yes. Uh, I'm good. So how you so doing, how we, man? How yeah, you, how are you good. guys all locked up together? Yes, we are, and it is a crowded house. Yeah. yeah what's that like with seven people in a house? Lock. I mean, how long have you guys been locked down? You, you guys, you're in Utah, right? Yeah, it's been, um, I think, about a month we've been plugging away at our, at our homes. But, yeah, it's seven personalities and it's madness <laughs> and a range of ages. So Yeah. How, uh, how is this virus thing out there? And, and, like, are you guys a lot of cases like we have out here? I haven't heard that much about Utah. No. In fact, it's, um, it, it's kind of one of those unfortunate things where in order to help some, I, I don't want to I don't want to say unenlightened people, but in order to help some people understand the gravity of the situation, you have to show them things and statistics and, and footage from New York. We have a friend who went out there as the doctor to help out and oh, wow. he, he's been, he's been kind of keeping a, a blog about it and sharing images and it's, it's terrifying. And so yeah. Yeah, some, it's not, hasn't been that bad. I think we have, we've had uh, around 50, 50 deaths in Utah that can be traced to. Right. So, oh, that's, that's not bad. Yeah. It's actually pretty reasonable, all things considered. <laughs> yeah. Um, Very reasonable. So what are you guys doing to pass the time besides making very funny videos and posting <laughs> them to your Instagram and making me laugh every day? Oh, well, I appreciate and that. I, <laughs> I, I'm, I, here I thought I was, you know, a field marketing director for, or a contractor for a variety of companies, but um, I'm actually also a third grade, fifth grade, middle school and high school and college teacher. teacher. So I, it's, it's, it's crazy how much schoolwork we've been going through on a daily basis. I would, I want to produce more content, but I'm just, I'm sitting down with my seven year old every day for hours right. doing work. And they're doing it all online. I mean, I have, my two kids are a little older um than seven but they um it's like they they can't wait to wake up do their homework and then have the entire rest of the day free it seems like they have so much less schoolwork than they had and they get up by mid-morning they're done unless they have like a class they have to attend in the middle of the day and then they're on video games and playing music all day yeah i think once we get going it's not relatively speaking, it's less than a eight hour school day, yeah. but to get them to that point where they're actually doing it, it's, it's, it's hard as a parent, but yeah. whatever. That's what I've heard from all, all my clients. <clears throat> I'm a personal trainer here, but I train people like they're, oh, he says, he's, he's really, he's, and you'll see, really <laughs> says the guy, is that, wearing is that why the shirt was off? yeah, that's, exactly. That's why wearing exactly. A pants. I was trying to show my leg muscles. Meanwhile, you see Greg has a scarf on, right? Do you get that? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well it's new york yeah <laughs> fabulous he's beautiful isn't he and but yeah a lot of the yeah a lot of like the online teaching and stuff's been tough on a lot of the parents like a lot of my clients are like yeah it's just it's rough for them i i think it's hard because some of the things it's a kind of embarrassing to admit but a, a, some of the concepts uh, junior high math concepts i have to google because i've forgotten how to do some of those things because it's not yeah. in my everyday but uh yeah it's it's good the, the kids are they're dealing with it in stride but i i wish the teachers could come to my house instead of yeah right kind of lean in there but, what part of utah are you in without 
Salt Lake Valley. So, and yeah, beautiful. Northern. Awesome, awesome. A lot of so, ski resorts, and yeah. uh, it's we've got. It's a it's a great place. Air's clean right now, so it's amazing. I've only been I've been to Utah twice, and it it was so awesome. Like I would love to obviously get back, but besides skiing and stuff, I don't like my business travels don't take me to Utah anymore. Um, but it was beautiful. It's a beautiful part of the country. You guys should come out, stay with me. You can live in the madness, and then we can go skiing when this whole thing blows over. I'm that down to a- come out and chill, but no skiing for me. <laughs> I'm just not a ski guy. It's true. I, there are always so many injuries associated with skiing. Yeah. So you want a couple of – you want two New Yorkers New or New York adjacent guys coming out, hanging out with you and your five kids? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey. You want to make yeah. content, we'll yeah. make it. <laughs> <laughs> wake up drawn on our faces it'll be fun good times that's a good segue to kind of what we want to talk about is how did this all start man got all these yeah. funny ass videos your family's involved oh, uh, i don't know we just we're kind of unorthodox parents um and we do whatever we have to to keep our kids motivated and smiling through i guess normal but you know difficult life circumstances so I don't know. We're just, uh, we're weirdos pretty much. Yeah, my wife and I, and, and we enjoy making our kids feel uncomfortable because they make us feel uncomfortable. So. Yeah. I have to tell you when I first, the first way, you know, when I came to be familiar with your Instagram account, it was from my wife who was like, you have to see this. He is killing his kids. And I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean he's killing his kids i don't want to see that she's like no she's like he dresses up in these costumes and takes them to school and freak out and and she's like that is amazing you must see this so i i of course watched it and i was like that is amazing just the level of what you go to to do that to embarrass and make your kids uncomfortable is sensational every parent has to love watching that i only can relate it to my son who my oldest son who's 16 and he'd kill me for saying this, but he is, he's the most like that would make, he would be the most uncomfortable in that scenario of anyone in the world. Yeah. Right? Like is so conscious of anyone being like, it all being the center of attention and people like being like, Oh, your dad is crazy. What's the matter with him? So I love it. But what are your kids? Tr- I mean, now I, you know, your kids are in a lot of your videos and they're hysterical. Um, what what I mean, how did they take that like when you started doing that to them and like they show up in the car and you're dressed in crazy outfits on taking <laughs> up them up at school? Yeah, well it kind of started I was Sophie was having some real strong anxiety the morning of her first day at a new school, mm-hmm. uh new junior high, which I hated junior high. It was the worst experience Sucks. ever. Yeah. Sucks. Yeah. Uh everybody's at different, you know, maturation ages. It was awful. Anyway. Um, she was having, she, she's very high strung. And so you could see on her face how hard she was taking this new change. And I just went in and grabbed a hat that I had made for a friend for the Kentucky Derby party that he was going to it has like flowers on it, top hat. Um, and then I put it on and I started singing songs as if I was, uh, alt world Willy Wonka. I called right. myself Philly Wonka. Right. And, um, from there I made up some songs. I just, all under the, the, you know, the guise of let's get her to smile on the way to middle school, picked up her friends. We had some fun, laughed a little bit. She leaves the car smiling and uh, posted that video to my stories. And a lot of people were like, you should do this tomorrow. And I'm like, <laughs> okay. And so I just kind of ran with it. Yes. And, you know, I mean, it's pretty amazing. So is that like what drove the growth of your Instagram? The- um, I had like a hundred thousand followers from writing stupid notes right. excuse notes for my why my kids were late i my right. eldest daughter who you know is now in college she was always late in junior high and so i'd write these ridiculous excuses and that's kind of that garnered a following and then the carpool antics furthered it i guess you could say right. so that's how the whole thing started with all the notes that you were posting yeah that's the weird uh, i guess handle on instagram late notes but whatever A- any of those did she actually take into school yes uh I made her take all of them into school. If she was ever late, there are a few that I wrote just kind of uh, as a, an homage or, you know, whatever. But every time my kids were late and I could see the writing on the wall, I'd have notes ready for each of them. And I'd just be like, oh, 
please excuse Carson for being late. And yeah, anyway. What, what was the reaction from the schools? I got a call because I'd put my number at the bottom of the notes, you know, at first. Um, and they, I would get calls and they'd say, did you really write this? And I'd be like, yeah, I really wrote that. And sorry, she's late. And they'd laugh. But, oh, it's funny. Thank you. Made our day type thing. But the, the, the attendance office individual uh, people or staff members are usually pretty cool. Yeah. Are you going to do anything with these notes? I mean, there's so <laughs> many of them. Uh, there are a lot of them. I have them all like they they were oftentimes i'd you know ask them for them back and so they would give them to me back sometimes they have little stamps on them with the attendance office thing it's fun <laughs> but i have them i have pictures of them i i don't know i don't know what i'm gonna do with them maybe burn them one day ceremoniously no, that's got the great book <laughs> dude that's a very good like book to put out of you know people put out their diaries and all of that stuff like it'd be hysterical to put all these notes out in one collection yeah i mean I, that, that'd be fun i have note writing has kind of been my love language for my kids anyway ever since that it became kind of my way of expressing things to them that you know it's hard for me to do you know face to face verbally I'm a little bit of a you know social weirdo so anyway you wouldn't get it from the videos yeah I uh I just kind of lean in on those I'm like whatever I'm just I'm already neck deep I might as well plunge all the way <laughs> Do you have like a uh, like an improv or performance background at all? We know you were an athlete. We talked about that off air. Um, I I I was an athlete. I loved I loved musical theater. I always have, but I didn't really learn to be. I it was one. I was one of those kids where I watched theater in high school, but I'm like, oh, I really want to do that. But I was so afraid of the kind of the social. I guess Stigma. whatever would come back to me on that front because I had athlete friends right Same. Yeah. um and so i always appreciated it always really loved the performing world but never did it and then i married an actress who we she did a lot of things and was gonna go perform on broadway and then she fell in love with me inexplicably and she <laughs> stick, stuck around but she um she, one day she was doing a community theater production and she said you should come along just be my support and i said okay and i went around, i went along and she knew the director and the director called me in and i'm like oh this is probably normal and i'll just sit here and, and i'll support her you know just me being in the room is probably helpful and i went in and she said now seth you sing and you do this little line you hold and i, don't, I said no this is this is for angie but um, she kind of wrote me into one of her community theater productions, and I loved it. I was a background, I was a cop, I was in the ensemble, and I thought dancing and singing on stage was hilarious and fun. And so it kind of opened the door to, um, that led to a, another show, and then I was the dentist in Little Shop, and then I was a few other things, just all community theater production. And I, but I really liked it, it was fun. And then um, I, I started doing improv, and and I still do improv, but it's, it's one of those, it's such a challenging, hard thing for me. Like I'm scared to death of performing, but afterwards it's almost like a, such an accomplishment that I have, I've done it. It's yeah. different, like playing, playing sports, you know, getting up to bat and succeeding there. It's, it's kind of like, I, I did that a lot. Um, and that didn't have its same, but this is always challenging for me and, and very difficult. So let's talk about your baseball for a second. So how did, where'd you go to school? And you, um, yeah, I went to a few contract. schools locally here in Utah. I wanted to go to Arizona State or Texas, and, and, I, and I had a few opportunities, but my dad was very sick at the time, so I stayed local so he could come to the games because he was in a wheelchair at the time. Um, but I played at BYU um, here locally, and that's why I have kind of a, an association with the, the university still. My daughter goes to a school locally that I, I also went to UVU, so UVU, then BYU, and, and then played for the Padres organizations. How long did you play for, how, how long did you play for the Padres? Uh, just a couple of years while I was uh, injured myself shortly after starting. So so farm? Yes. Or? Yeah, farm system. I never made it to I would have that would have been great, but I didn't. Did you who, who did you ever, did you play with anybody that I mean, I'm sure you did play with guys that got up to the big leagues? Yeah. Um uh Jason Bartlett who was a World Series winner with the yep. Devil Rays. Um mm -hmm. Few others who've made it and succeeded in, in different ways in, in their own right in in the big league, but it's it's funny because some of the some of the I guess highly most highly recruited or highly drafted individuals that that year um, never ended up making it, which was interesting. Just, yeah. But big money for nothing. Yeah. Were you drafted? Um, I was a senior sign, so right. just right out of 
out of yeah. college put pick me up free basically yeah. you know? <laughs> free <laughs> baseball baseball's tough man that's like one of those sports where you can i mean there's stories of guys that get picked first and second overall and never see a professional field it's, it's yeah it really blows my mind i had no idea and the draft is like where they draft like 1200 players or something like that yeah, it's. I think the madness behind about baseball is there are usually six farm teams, all with thirty plus players, and they're all trying to make a thirty-five, you know, or a forty-man roster, thirty-man roster to play at the big league level. Where, you know, in order to earn whatever you want to call it, tenure or get the pension, um, you've got to be in the league a set amount of days, and yeah. the, oftentimes they'll send guys down right before that they eclipse that date so they don't get, pen- you know, it's yeah. such a game and such a business, but it is a very competitive one. Um, it's not like the, you know, the NBA has, I think, I think, you know, they have the G league or whatever, but it's a lot fewer competition, I guess, fewer people in the competition. Yeah, well, the but. thing with baseball is that, you know, because there's so much farm, obviously there's so many farm teams and the likelihood of getting paid is so slim you know, unless you're a first round, second round draft pick, yeah. that, you know, you're, you're in it for the long haul Absolutely. before you really be, you know, making money yeah. in baseball. Right. So it's like, you, <laughs> you gotta be amazing at baseball and you have to be in it, you know, for the long yeah. haul to you know, maybe by the time you're in your mid to late twenties on average, probably is when you start to be able to make some money as you know, a call up yeah right I, I mean I have a bunch of friends their agents and stuff and I'm like that's crazy they're recruiting kids from 17 years old and they're not going to make a dime until they're 24 years old yeah you know, 23 it's, maybe and it's it's so interesting because there really is baseball there, there's so much parody regarding the talent really at, at the major league level there are the phenoms obviously you know mm-hmm. you've got and everybody knows who they yeah. are um they're usually the people at the all-star game but for the most part, the talent level is pretty, it's, it's who can stay healthy. Yeah. It's who can stay, you know, psychologically strong enough to kind of go through year after year and the ups and downs of baseball, but, and, and keep their head up. Yeah. But it's a, it's a beautiful game. I can't, I have a hard time watching it now on television just because I, I don't have four hours every day to devote to it. <laughs> I know. Same. Is there, is I love there, it. I love, do you love it? You still love it? I still love the game. I think it's beautiful. I will watch October baseball and I'll watch, you know, I love, I'm a big Cubs fan. I have been my whole life. So anytime I can watch the Cubs play, um, I usually, you know, I'll catch a few games, um, make sure I watch them start to finish, but I usually just check the highlights and, and what yeah. happened in the games afterwards. Yeah, me too. It's, I mean, it's so many. I played fantasy baseball for the first time ever last year. Oh. I, I'm not even really a big fantasy sports player, right? I've only ever played fantasy football i played fantasy basketball years and years ago when it was in the usa today and you had to use to fax in your lineups like, that's <laughs> yeah, <how> I <laughs> and, so i was i had a friend was like oh you want to play fantasy baseball and i'm like yeah i've never done it for sure right so i entered this fantasy baseball league and it is a full-time job playing fantasy baseball Right. Yeah. Nobody told me that. No one told me every <laughs> single day I got to go in and set lineups and check stats and injury. But like literally, like I'm the general manager of the freaking yeah. New York Yankees. <laughs> every single day, I won 17 games throughout the course of the baseball season. <laughs> oh, <that's weird>. it <laughs> anyway. is. Yeah, and then they invited me back, and I'm like, guys, I had a stroke and the most anxiety I've ever had in my life last baseball season, and I didn't watch one professional baseball game. <laughs> yeah that's so true that's hilarious it is so much management i'm with you i i did it once and that was it and i was like that was good you really need to be committed both you know to the sport and mentally to play fantasy baseball absolutely that's awesome any of that stuff though any of that stuff so do you you said you still watch a little bit of baseball but like is, is a part of you cause i have a buddy who he bounced around he played in the nfl for like three years yeah he doesn't watch football anymore at all because he's kind of, I don't want to say like, I guess heartbroken is the word or he's kind of like, I'm done with it. Are you like that at all? Or are you just like still enjoy it? Still able to watch? Um, that's, that's a good question. I, I love it for the beauty of the game and the strategy behind it and, and the reminisce kind of aspect of, of it. I don't, 
when I go to a game, anytime I go to a live game, I think my struggle is there's a little bit of ego to, still too much to me uh, where if I will go to the game, I'll be like, I can do that. I, I'm better than that guy right now. Like, I, you know, here I am, a 42-year-old guy. I'm just like, yeah, I can I, I would have legged that out for a season yeah, right. or whatever, yeah. just dumb things like that. So it's probably my ego. So I have a hard time that for that reason. Or, and I can still throw, and I'm throw, I can still throw pretty well. But, yeah, so there's, there's that I can do that aspect of it. And then there's also the, a little bit of heartbreak. And it's just the time. I mean, yeah. you, watch a, you watch a soccer game like FIFA uh, or, you know, the Bundesliga or Premier League. It's 90 minutes, and you've got a little bit of a break. But you can set your watch to it. You're like, unless this goes. And, but for a baseball game, I mean, four or five hours is typical. Yes. You know, to the ballpark, watching the game, back from the ballpark. It's crazy. So, what so. position did you play? I was a shortstop. Oh, cool. And then when a better shortstop came, I started pitching. So they're, they're like, oh, he's got a great arm. Let's, we got to find a place for him. So it was nice. But, Damn, so you were a pitcher, huh? Yeah, I had a little bit of everything. I was kind of a utility guy for a while, but I had my eyes set on being Trevor Hoff- Hoffman's replacement, but oh, yeah. whatever. Can you throw 97 miles an hour? I could back what? in the day. 98 was where I topped out. So. Oh, wow. Shit. I was a knuckleball pitcher, also a shot, oh. and but I pitched knuckleball till I was through college. And I, um, I topped out uh, at about 60 miles an hour. <laughs> <laughs> but, hey those guys have the longest life in the big i know that's exactly league. what so my dad was a sports agent right so growing up he mainly worked with football players those were his main clients was football players but he had a few baseball players and from a very young age he told me my best shot at becoming a professional athlete <laughs> five, it, I was, I, you know, in my, the mid five feet range. Now I'm five nine, like on a good day. He was like, "You got to be a knuckleball pitcher." He's like, "That's your only <laughs> hope." He's like, "You got a good bat, but not a bat that's going to get you anywhere." He's like, "Knuckleballs." So he taught me how to throw <laughs> knuckleballs since I was in like the fourth grade, and I just threw knuckleballs, and that's it. I threw through a knuckleball, and then I threw a little bit faster ball, and that was it. <laughs> that's all I had. But I did that's pretty a well. Lost art. Yeah, it's I a know. lost art if you can do it. Those balls move like wiffle balls. It's crazy. And then yeah, what if I threw, that's, that's support a dad? He's like, hey, yeah. I'm going to recognize <laughs> some limitations <laughs> maybe physically, and we're going to lean into what we can lean into. I yeah, like that. It was it was good advice. And I mean, the thing, I, you know, if you throw a bad knuckleball, the ball's going 600 feet. Right. And <laughs> That's true. I had that happen many times. <laughs> but uh, I love that. How are your shoulders holding up? Oh, I my I wake up most days and you know my arms are numb for the first few hours of the day just because of the shoulder. Yeah, me too. Actually. Of, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then you know, it, it gets better as the day moves on and as blood starts flowing to that area. But yeah, it's it it's not the best my shoulders but you sacrifice that part of your body i guess when you i can't imagine what it's like for football players like to hear some of these linemen who are in wheelchairs the, a year out of the league it's crazy so i have it easy compared yeah i know again bring it back to my buddy who played in the nfl he was offensive lineman he's 29 he said like two knee surgeries already after football <laughs> he's had to recover from them like yeah. Jesus. and it's just going to keep happening because he lifts he works out very hard still, and it's just he's a big dude. So yeah, but he's also in good shape, right? So a lot of well, yeah, yeah. who are, you know, I, I read a stat a few years ago that the there was only four linemen in the NFL that were under three hundred pounds, right? Oh. And in nineteen ninety two or ninety one, the early nineties, there was only four that were over three hundred pounds. Yeah. Uh, that doesn't surprise me. It's crazy yeah. how the game has changed. But so now, much. you know, those, you know, any athlete, you know, when you come off of that conditioning cycle, you know, if you're still, if you're not committed to that, you're going to balloon. And, you know, you look at a lot of these linemen. I mean, anyone, look at Michael Irvin. You know, he's put on probably 100 pounds <laughs> since he's stopped yeah. playing. Not yeah. hard, but a lot. But your buddy is in pretty, you wouldn't, you know, he yeah, doesn't he look went, an offensive lineman. No, well, that's the thing is he went from 310 to like 245 and he has abs now. And it's like. Okay, he took care of himself. That's kind of terrifying. Isn't it scary? And it's like yeah. eating the strength of alignment. Yeah, 
eating was his job though. Like eating was yeah. literally his job. I went to his house to visit him in college and he had shared a, a normal house in Long Island with all these, these guys. He had his own separate fridge. Like he had his own refrigerator <laughs> for his it's other food. And I was like, this is fucked up. <laughs> like, <laughs> with yeah. you? I, I, for a while I was working, um, I was doing some consulting with a sports agency and they represented a decathlete, a guy that his name was Brian Clay. He won two uh, Olympic gold medals in the decathlon, right? In Jesus, whatever, 2012 Olympics, he didn't. So 2008, 2004, um, he would eat 10,000 calories a day while he was training. That's nice. And he was real thin, you know, he was, he, you, I mean, unbelievable shape, eating 10,000 calories a day insane and I, w- I watched him like sit down and eat like hamburger after hamburger after ham- i mean i'm like that is insane what shape is he in now is he st- i mean i imagine he's still in pre- fairly good shape but i have no idea i haven't seen him in years um because then he I'd didn't be interested qualify to find out. Um, for the olympics in 12 and, and i just lost touch with the guys i was working with and i have no idea um it was just it's funny because I was, yeah i was a machine when i was playing like you know all the ab muscles all that stuff and the 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 devolution <laughs> the the evolution away from that was so it it was it feels so sudden but I think I kept my habits like oh I can still eat like this because yeah. I've got you know metabolism to support it and then the next thing I know I'm like oh how do I get back there and it's <laughs> it's so hard getting back yeah. so hard getting back but you, you know, know. <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah. now did you ever do any of those like. Uh beer league softball <laughs> things after you were done with the boys like yeah actually i i played softball and then i i've actually played a few seasons of adult baseball here locally there's an adult wood bat league that's fun yeah. um and i like i like it because i get to use wood bats and i can get up there and you know throw in the mid to high 80s maybe low 90s occasionally and people think it's phenomenal and so there's a there's an element of it's it's fun it's definitely it's hard because you remember what you could do and you're seeing what you are doing and you know there's a de- there's definitely a dis- you and when you can recognize a distinct difference in performance it's kind of a sad thing that's that's where i'm at so yeah because throwing 90 still has to suck like i you know i can't imagine well i'm, to- I'm totally joking <laughs> no but comparatively though you're absolutely it does like you're like oh i used to be able to throw this ball by anybody and yeah. now people in a beer league are fouling it off time out <laughs> <laughs> i know that depresses me when i used to be able to walk to the end of the street in two minutes and now it takes me five <laughs> <laughs> i i do i i, I to answer your question further i struggle i've played a few softball leagues like slow pitch softball and i i struggle with that because that feels very like going from the highest level to I'm going to throw this underhand to you now. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you another funny softball story. Well, first of all, so, so I played about, I don't know, started with an adult beer league softball team 10 uh-huh. years ago, eight years ago with a bunch of my friends here, all who are in the sports industry, right? Athletes, ex-collegiate athletes, like really, you know, credible dudes who played sports at high level. Sure. You, you know, college, some pro, at, you know, whatever. And we started this softball team. We show up to our first game and we look across and it's like a bunch of old men, right? Like in Mm -hmm. their 50s and older, some of them. And we're like, oh my God, we're going to murder these guys, right? So we get on the field. We have not played softball yet. By the way, I know what story you're telling. I've lived this story. Keep going. (laughs) So we got, so you know where this is going. We get on the field. We lost 45 (laughs) to nothing. The game got mercied in the fourth, well, fifth inning, right? We did not get one hit. These guys yeah, walked yeah. off the field, and I'm not kidding. The horror in all of our faces, mostly theirs, because I was laughing. I'm like, you guys are ridiculous. Like, when a professional hockey player, I'm like, you guys suck so bad. You took <laughs> such a big game, and we got – this game lasted 26 minutes. Yep. <laughs> no, and, and they probably hit – they probably went through their lineup in the bottom of the inning, your first inning, whatever. They just hit the ball wherever you guys weren't, and exactly. they, had no, they, had, they knew exactly what they were doing. They waited for their pitch. It's crazy. There's those yeah. specialist softball players, so, and it's embarrassing. 
I played on that team. I retired last year. That was my last year. I retired on a high note. After 10 years, we topped out at two wins a season. And uh, I don't think we had more than 12 wins over the 10 years. And well, I'm, like, well, let's, I'm going to go out on this. Yeah, two is better than zero. It, I guess it is. <laughs> I guess it look is. on the positive side, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what's your I, yeah, favorite costume? Just, like of all, that, things, uh, of all the things you've dressed up in, I know this is a, uh, out of the left field, uh, no pun intended, but of no, all the things you've true. dressed up in to embarrass your kids, what was your favorite? Oh, man, I feel bad because I was saving so many good ones for when it, when it became warm again, when the snow was melted and, and we're back in, you know, springtime weather. We had some really fun things planned, but I love um, – I, I can tell I've asked the kids and like, which one was your least favorite? Which one was your favorite? I like doing right. anything that makes Sophia, my daughter as uncomfortable as possible. She hated, I did this one where it's like a play on Mary Poppins and I right. have this prosthetic nose. It's awful. I look like my grandma actually. Um, but I speak in this Mrs. Doubtfire type ass accent and she, she hated it so much. When I got to a stop sign, she tried to dive out of the car. I had to grab the handle <laughs> And tell her, no, you're going to get hurt. And she started crying. And she said, why are you trying to ruin my life? And I was just, <laughs> and there's a moment of that video where I was like, what am I doing? I am, I, like, I had this really kind of reconciliatory, uh, I don't know if I can do this anymore. And then later on, you know, she, it, it, her temper died down a little bit, but she, she was livid. I think it was because it surprised her. The way we planned it was my wife started driving. And she, I pretended like I was sick. So Sophia came into my bedroom and said, Dad, are you driving us to school today? I said, oh, I faked. I was like, oh, I'm so sick. And my wife said, I'll take you. And she goes around the block. You know, she goes around to pick up the other kids and then comes back. And she has to pass our street. And I, she like stops. And I jumped out of the back of a truck with an umbrella dressed as you know, Mary Poppins or Terry Sloppins and my daughter just lost her mind. She's like, nope, that's not happening. And anyway, anyway. So I like those because, you know, it makes her uncomfortable, but I, I don't want I don't want to, I don't want her to be too psychologically damaged, you know, later in life. Too but late. It's too late. I know. We're all kind of there. Aren't we? well done. I'm, I'm not a parent, but when I am one, when I'm a dad, I want to be you. Okay, that's what I want to do. I want to dress up and bother the shit out of my kids. <laughs> <laughs> well, I take it, I, I probably just push it too far. Like my, my son would not wake up in the morning for, for his, you know, for, to catch his bus to school. And so at five or four thirty in the morning, I dressed up like, um, you know, like uh, uh, someone from Motley Crue, Nikki Six, from head to toe. And I got on his bed with my electric guitar and my amp in his room and I blasted and I played the beginning of, um, God, what was it? Live Dr. Way. Feel Good or something like really, really loud. And, and he shoots out of his bed with like terror on his face, you know, like white as it goes. Like, oh! and, and I said, time to wake up, get ready for school. And uh, so I take it too far. I probably could just like set his alarm. But that's not fun for me. Well, I just so. set his alarm when you can rock him out to Nikki Motley Crue. <laughs> yeah. To, to shoot him out of the I, I say there's two that I really love, not even videos of your kids, but just the when you dressed up like um, Gene Simmons. Yeah, I love Gene. Right? I love Kiss. That was awesome. And then um, when you did the jo <laughs> the Joker makeup, the video with putting on the Joker <laughs> oh, <this> makeup. <laughs> yeah, the tutorial. I've watched it like 30 times. I'm like, I'm going to do I this. I love the tutorial because I've, I've had people message me. It's like, how come I'm putting mayonnaise on my face? It's not keeping it white. I'm like, oh, man. I don't know what to tell you. Like, <laughs> That's so funny. That's awesome. Yeah, well, I, have, I have fun. I'm a big kiss. So you're obviously like a hairband, classic rock, metal guy. Well, I, I, I grew up, um, it was definitely a part of my childhood. I also love, you know, West Coast rap. I love East Coast rap. I'm, I'm a big fan of almost everything. I, I find myself gravitating away from country music for the most part. That sounds yes. cliche, but I just, I can't, I don't know. I have a it hard sucks. time. I, I, it I, sucks. I, 
Well, I feel like I'm, I find I find myself making fun of it more than I like. It's the worst. You know, like, man, and I love and I love my dog and my wife, <laughs> and I'm sitting on my porch bench sharpening my knife. It's like all these crazy <laughs> lyrics where it's like, really, this is as smart as we can be. Yeah, I, I can't. I mean, like, don't get me wrong. Some rap songs are super dumb, but like sure. at least there's a beat and something to it and you can dance like country music i just i can't do it i can't yeah only when people ask me what i like from music i'm like anything literally every and anything except country music <laughs> i i yeah it's it's hard to say it because i don't want people in the country music industry to think oh they, they don't appreciate us but i just can't get i can't get it i can't no, get it. i think I think you can appreciate how talented some of them are, like artists. Like some of them have really good voices, and some of them make good songs, and like it's really impressive. Like as you know, as art, but like as music, every day I can't listen to that shit. Yeah, there's a song in particular that comes to mind every time I think of country music. But it literally the lyrics are like, "It's what I like about Sundays, <laughs> napping on the porch swing, you laying there next to me." It's like what? That's Florida Georgia line. It's gotta be. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but I was I was like, this cannot be real. And then my friends are like, yeah, this is a real song. It's a great band. Leave it alone. I'm like, okay. I remember. I remember in college. I remember, in college. I remember in college. We uh, this is back when you had to make CDs. Our whole townhouse we lived in was you know eight dudes in a house, and everyone had to pick like three or four songs to put on the CD. And we have our night, like, you know, Lil Wayne was big back then. So, like, yeah. there's a lot of that on there. And everyone, you know, eight guys each got to pick about four songs. Then that song Chicken Fried came on. <laughs> Brown band. And it just stopped. And I looked and I go, who the fuck picked this? <laughs> <laughs> like, it was, it was one of, like, yeah, it was our nicest roommate. I still love him this day. He's the coolest guy. But he's like, oh, you don't like this song? I'm like, dude. You're killing me here. <laughs> uh, yeah, you, the, the best part of that, you know, like, as soon as you turn and ask that question, it's just shiver shot down his spine. Like, oh, crap. Nick's going to hate me. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> I was so mad. <laughs> oh, that's you ruined the night with your chicken fry. <laughs> the worst part is, like, we've all been that guy who's like, who picked this song? It's like, oh, no. <laughs> You know, I used to I used to DJ when I was in college and I got hired to DJ like sorority formals and, and that kind of crap. Right. So yeah. it, it would always be the worst because, you know, girls would come up and be like, oh, can you play this song? And can you play that song for me and my boyfriend? Right. And for yeah. every single yeah. song, the girl said, can you play this? That is her friend's worst song. Right. <laughs> so. I, every time I would start a song, right, I mean, I'd play Daniel by Elton John, right? <laughs> two seconds, Great not song. two bars, two bars into that song, five girls run up and be like, you must turn the song off. That is Shelly's song where they just broke up with their boyfriend. <laughs> it's, you gotta go. And it was the worst. And so I felt that every other song that I would ever oh, DJ. Oh. It's, it's like, he's, yeah. the DJ sucks. DJ I never played is chicken for rough. rough. Yeah. Yeah. I know. You've got to, it's, a, it's definitely, everybody wants it to be their own personal party when you DJ an event like that. Uh, I can't imagine. <clears throat> now, I can imagine a guy like you. You said you married an actress and you obviously like to perform. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Was your wedding at all like kind of a performance? Did you guys do like a choreographed dance or something like that? I could see that happening. It was before that. Yeah. The funny thing is, it's before that time. I watched, I, I watched those later and I'm like, oh, that would have been fun. But no, we were, it was so, <laughs> our, our wedding was so bland and so benign comparatively. <laughs> um, the, the, the lady who, the lady who made our cake actually was hired by my mother-in-law who's nuts, but also I love her. Um, she hired my this lady to make our cake and we were taking too long to go cut it apparently. So this crazy old lady cut it herself and started like, sh like dishing it out. We didn't even get like the cake cutting moment. It was the weirdest, it was a weird wedding, but a lot of funny memories, That's but it was not like that. It was pretty bland. It was colored by numbers. <laughs> oh, that stinks. Yeah. We didn't do anything. Yeah, you know, I can see we it. Did. I know it. Talking about, I could totally see it. Like if you guys dressed up as like princess Leia and Darth Vader. <laughs> I would have loved that. Like, <laughs> a, real, 
a real, this is my daughter and I just married her. I'm also a, dar- a Sith Lord kind of vibe. That would have been fun. So do you have any plans for, I mean, I know your daughter's, you're older, right? She's, she's 20, you said. And yeah. Do you, have any, do you have any like hopes and dreams of like walking her down the aisle, like dressed in oh. some absolutely ridiculous outfit? I mean, you must, she must know it's yeah. coming. She, it's, it's when, when we do um, the wedding thing for any of my children, it's going to be, I am going to insert as much madness into it as possible. Absolutely. There's going to be costumes. They're going to be like, I'm going to hire people to come do weird things at the event because I just want them to be like, what is happening? Because. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you say weird things, like what do you have in mind? I picture like jugglers and like clowns. Sword swallowers. Well, I, so if I were a billionaire and this is, it's probably good. I'm not, but my whole dream would be to create just phony, weird businesses and like pop-ups that don't exist. My friend has been telling his kids and like, we've got on board with it for years that there's a restaurant locally that exists that doesn't exist. He's like, Hey, I'm taking your mom out. We're going to Chandaludis, um, you know, <laughs> home, of the, home of the fish ice cream. And so what I would do is I would have Chandaludis cater to my daughter. It's going to cater my daughter's wedding. They're going to be there. They're going to serve fish ice cream with mayo, you know, whipped cream, just like we've said for years. But I'm going to make these things that I've planted seeds over the course of their life a reality. Yeah. Like the guy when my my kids wouldn't sleep, my grandmother – so their great grandmother would tell them when, when she was visiting would tell them things like, "Ah, oh, you should go to sleep because there's a there's a man kidnapping blonde haired blue eyed kids in the neighborhood and he's in the neighborhood. I'm gonna have that guy like come to the wedding and be like, hey, I tried to kidnap you a number of times. Like this old guy, like wrinkled hands and shake my daughter's hand. And be like, I'm too bad I never got to kidnap you. I'm that guy that was in the neighborhood. I just just stuff like that. Did you have you heard of the um I mean it was it started in like in the early nineties in New York City, the play Tony and Tina's wedding? Yes. Yeah, yeah. So it's like that interactive play where you yes. go to an actual yeah. wedding. And mm-hmm. so I, I went to that a few times with different girls I was dating. And one time we're there and you're sitting at a table and there's always a plant at the table that you're sitting at, right? So yeah. sitting at our table and you know, you're eating and you're taking part of this fake wedding. And the guy was like, hey, man, meet me in the bathroom in five minutes. And I'm like, <laughs> okay. Okay. Right, I'll, I'll, play, I'll, I'll, I'll play along. Right? So, so, yeah, of course. So I go in the bathroom and like five minutes later, and it's four guys who are from the family, right? And then me in the bathroom, right? And they all start arguing with each other. And I'm like, holy crap, I'm, I'm going to get the fake fight in the bathroom <laughs> and then got the, the fight that kind of like argument ends it's like typical italian you know bros going after each other and they start smoking pot in the bathroom right and yeah. they're like hey you want you want to hit off of this and i'm like this is a play right it's <laughs> a joint <laughs> like what is going on here so i'm like no man i'm good like so that's exactly like i want plants everywhere i just want it to be I want it to be madness. I want per, like it to become a performance piece like that. I, and I wanted to go to that so many times and it just never worked out. It was always sold out. It was yeah. awesome. It was, it was fun. Well, um, I want to come to those weddings when you have them. I'll invite you guys. You, you guys could be two of the plants. Definitely. Yes. Definitely. Dude. One of you could be my ex lover from college. I don't know. That's, do That's Nick. That's definitely Nick. Okay. He'll take, Nick, he'll take Nick. that role. No problem. Look at him. And Look at Nick, him. Nick wears some some chaps, massless chaps. He's wearing yeah. them. Perfect. Dude. <laughs> God, this is my new favorite interview. This is the best. The best. <laughs> You're talking his language. Wow. My, my my I don't know. I just I, I'm always I always like to make real life situations as uncomfortable as possible for as many people as possible. My 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 sister's wedding. This is a great wedding story. <laughs> I went there. My wife we're all we're all at this dinner everyone's introducing themselves you know the the, the bride and and all of the the wedding party is at the front table like they are and the microphone's being passed everyone's introducing themselves because it's i think there are 100 people there but it's quaint enough that everyone gets a chance to kind of tell who they are how they're related to someone in the wedding party 
and the microphone gets to me and I just so happen to be at a different table than my wife somehow and so I'm sitting right next to my burly uncle who looks a lot like Jake the Snake Roberts if you can Amazing. imagine <laughs> oh he's burly he's got a mullet he's got the Fu Manchu mustache and he has been out in the sun since he was you know zero years old so he is leathery and he looks like Tiger King <laughs> but, but burlier bigger more muscular and tanner and so he he's sitting there i get the mic first and i my and this is a very conservatively religious group and i look right at um, my sister in the face who's kind of like oh crap what's gonna happen and i look down at my my uncle and i kind of stroke his mullet and i say hi i'm seth i am ashley's brother and this is my partner kevin and then i sit down and i hand and her face and because her her in-laws are like so uber religious it's not even funny they went white as they they were white as ghosts and it was the best wedding party i've been to for a while so well you got to top it i know I, i'm gonna top it at my own kids i like police show up and they arrest me for some trumped up you know some fake charges whatever i wanted to be a member of oh did you hear at, at isabella's wedding uh, her dad got arrested for like ah, I don't even know. I think he had cocaine in his car. Like <laughs> you know, all fashion, fashion the, the kilos of cocaine with flour and whatever, and put them in the back of my car. He got uh, caught in the handicap stall with two guys from New York that he invited here. Yeah, <laughs> and they were, I think they were smoking something. I think it was members of the family. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mafia family. Yeah, exactly. Oh man! Well, dude, you sound, <laughs> you guys sound like a trip, and the most fun people to hang around with, man. I mean, it's obvious. We have fun. Yeah. We have fun. We're also, I think we, I think it's overwhelming for some people, but we have fun. Yeah. Well, these days, you know, the more fun you can bring into a day, the better. Live healthy. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. How how's everyone out there? Are you staying safe, staying healthy? For now. Yeah, you know, doing what you can. You know, trying to stay sane and eat and you know stay somewhat busy but there's not much you could do you know you can't i know, you know nothing you know walmart target and the grocery store that's it yeah it is weird because hobbies become difficult to maneuver as well because nothing's open to you know i'm making puppets because the madness continues at my house but i don't know if you've noticed that but yeah. Greg, you should uh send them our video yeah, we have a pu our our theme song is actually performed by two puppets, legit puppets. Yeah, well, please do. <laughs> I, will. I will. It's our it's our video that broke the internet, at least at my house. Yeah. I so wanna, listen, I I, wanna... I, uh, I think we've, I mean, we could talk about stuff for hours. So yeah. it's, it's, I'm. I'm... I'm bored as a, I'm bored as all get out. So keep talking, <laughs> whatever you want. I will give you whatever you want. <laughs> Nick, what do you need? Like, what 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 do you want? You want anything sent from Utah? I don't know. What do you guys got out there? I've heard the people are just the nicest people ever. That's all I really hear. I've never been. Hold on, my daughter Sophia. What? <laughs> no. <laughs> She she's, say? That's my daughter got traumatized. She wants, she's looking for a camera, but she was doing weird hand gestures. I was like, what are you you're looking at? I don't know. A robot? <laughs> I had to find her. She finally just had to say it out loud. Anyway, uh, w people in Utah are nice. I, did I hear you say they're like, we're the there's a kind of a, a mindset that we're nice out here? I've heard, I mean, I listen to a, a lot of comedy podcasts and they talk about the club out there. I forget the name. And they just say how the people are just like the, the city, Salt Lake, all that stuff is so beautiful. Everyone's just so polite. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, there is a there is a politeness. I think it's a pretty. There's also there's also kind of a. Um, Ache niceness. A, yeah, I think there's a suburban niceness too. Like yeah. as long as my grass is greener than yours, I'm going to be nice to you type thing. Um, <clears throat> that's, that sounds pessimistic but it's 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 a uh, everyone's very kind it is, it is a great place to live and to raise children and a family um but i i i i love actually i love the east coast i love the the kind of blunt honesty that comes with 
uh, you know, just people telling it how, how it is. I love working with people from Boston and New York and, and anyway. Yeah. Boston. <laughs> it probably gets overwhelming <laughs> when you're there, but. Yeah, I loved, I loved Salt Lake. It was great. It was great. Well, I mean, it was weird, <laughs> like, going out to, like, the bars and places. I forgot what it was. Like There are weird liquor there, laws here, for sure. Yeah, for very sure. weird liquor laws. Like, you had to pay every bar you had to be a member in, but you could, I don't know, it was weird. It was, it's, a, it's, like a, it's like a free membership, yeah. There, there is, yeah. Um, yeah. you know, the dominant religion out here uh, kind of has a stranglehold on some of the the laws, and it's it makes it very nice in some ways and then for people who aren't a member of that religious community i think it's frustrating for them but i get it you know it didn't bother I me mean, it wasn't anything it was just weird it's like all right we just call it a cover charge <laughs> yeah <laughs> exactly <a> you know? <laughs> so you still got to walk in and buy a beer if you wanted to buy one you know it's not yeah it's not like you can't it's just it was like i forgot it. yeah it was some kind of dry laws but everything was memberships it was and they all they do really for the membership, but don't they just scan your license and then you can go in remember. and like sign your name or something? Something like that. I had to had to buy like a bracelet, and I'm like, well, if I come back tomorrow, do I need to buy the bring the bracelet? They're like, no, you're good. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, but I don't understand. But you didn't have to do that at restaurants, so it's only like a club bar thing. Yeah, the, the, at restaurants they have to hide the bar from you now. I guess it has to be like oh, in yeah. the back or somewhere. Or a different room. I'm not. It's yeah. Again, Jesus. don't understand it. Yeah. Oh, anyway, what? What? Any suggestions for me? Uh, any, you know, costume suggestions? Because right now I'm just spinning my wheels. Costume suggestions. Mm -hmm. My God. Dress up like uh, Matthew McConaughey and Magic Mike. Okay. <laughs> uh, th that's the one that made the kids uh, the most uncomfortable is when I was the New Year's baby and I was in a diaper and yeah. uh, the whole time in a top hat. They were like, <laughs> afterwards, one of the kids came over and said, hey, that was really weird. It just kind of st like stone face. Like that was, that was really weird. That made me feel uncomfortable. And that was the first time I was like, oh, I've, I've damaged someone outside of my family to a point where they had to bring it up to me. And I, I felt bad about that. Have you done a zombie yet? Like walking? No, away. it was. So one of the big ones that was planned for the spring was a zombie apocalypse. And I was going to have a bunch of people, you know, they, I was going to, the kids were going to have to have a gun and like shoot some zombies or whatever. I also had planned uh, a bunch of, a convict bus like a real prison yeah. bus pulling up with a bunch of convicts in it and they had to go to school with these convicts who were going to break out into musical song and theater on the way and i was going to be one of the convicts dressed in full disguise it was but yeah zombies was on the plan it was we'll we have to figure out a way to do it anyway but it was gonna it was i was coordinating it's the fun ones are when i coordinate with like the neighborhood or beyond um yeah. you know these the theater groups that you know, or in into it, right? And no, any I'll, chance I'll, to I'll, I'll find. I'm going to find this video and I'll text it to you from like the town I live in in Connecticut. A couple years ago, um, we live on the by the beach, and one of these streets that lines the beach, all the moms. And I'm, I'm not even kidding when I say all the moms. I mean like 50 moms who live on the street got together and they did an exact reenactment of the Michael Jackson Thriller video. Oh, that's right? amazing. Um, and yeah. I mean, down yeah. to the costumes, like it was unbelievable. And they professionally filmed it and it went like one of the husbands is in the movie business. So they really filmed it like multiple cameras. Like, I mean, it's incredible. And uh, that's awesome. they did it two or three years in a row. It's, I mean, it's a production. And the first time they did it, it was a complete surprise. Nobody knew they were doing it. So all the people were outside on the street for Halloween. They do it on Halloween. And all of a sudden, these 50 moms break into Michael Jackson's thriller. It, it's incredible. It's so crazy. That's but, funny. Uh, my, so we did that for Halloween. We, uh, my daughter's national champion dance team, they did thriller. We, we got, I, I borrowed a bus for some people and they did it. And as wow. zombies, um, kind of the kids, but you know, it was, they they weren't that creepy because they're all so cute. But I want I want to go like full like blood pouring out of the mouth. 
terrifying zombie. <laughs> like, and this is a great time to do it, right? No. Yeah. <laughs> couldn't be more. Couldn't be more perfect. You could do. Uh, you could do the. Uh, I mean, there's so many you could do out of like classic movies. You know, like Ghostbuster. You could be a Power Ranger. Ooh, that would be a fun costume. Yeah. Super, we, super tight motorcycle so helmet. Nick will come we up have fun with it. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, not, I'm planning when school starts up again, I'm starting up again. So I've got a lot of time to plan. So any suggestions are welcome. Yeah. Yeah. Just to- we'll let you know. <laughs> There'll be plenty. Nick's will probably not be clean, but, you know, <laughs> take them with a grain. Hey, listen. Hey, listen. Magic Mike, I have no problem, like, pulling up to the elementary school. Because I'm going to do elementary school next year as well. I get to drive my other kids. I have no problem, you know, pumping Genuine's pony while the kids get in and I'm oiling myself up. I have no problem with that. The parents might. <laughs> but my, my, I think, my dad. I, I think you just made a new best friend. You and Nick. <laughs> you're going to be quite the couple. Can't wait. <laughs> yes. when I, when I gonna, dream you night, you guys should TikTok together. Yeah. <laughs> when I dream at night, that's the first song that plays. As soon as my dreams start, it's... <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh, yeah, it's going to be a good dream. Yep. Yeah. Never, well. never, never, never. yeah. <laughs> Same way. Right. So it's funny. So, you know, Nick's obviously a stand up comedian. And when I used to DJ the shows, nine out of 10 times when Nick would come up, I would bring him up to Pony. Nine out of 10 times. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Love that. Always start to strip you. It's great. All right, man. I think. I think we got a wrap. Hey, um, I, I, I really appreciate you having me on. And, and um, I would love, I, are we still, can I go off the record now or what? what um, no, 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 I'm still recording. So let, let me wind it out and then we can, you can. All right. Okay.